What's going on everyone, it's Richard Dixon here and welcome to episode 1 of my podcast. So for any of you guys that have kept up with content I've done previously, this is going to be slightly different. This is not the Yes podcast, it's not to do with any of the businesses I really have and it's not going to be only business focused here. We're going to be covering a lot of different topics with a, a vast amount of guests but today on this first episode I thought it would be fun to do it solo. Uh, as you can see, super casual setup. If you're not able to see it, it'll be because you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. So thank you very much for, for tuning into this. Today, I'm going to be talking about something that I think is extremely important, not just for entrepreneurs, for young people, for older people, for employees, for athletes. I think it's important for everyone, regardless of who you are, what you are, who you believe you are. Um, it's, a, it's a topic that I think is essential to speak about. And the, the topic is pain. I'm not just talking about physical pain, I'm talking about mental pain, essential pain, non-essential pain, and how we deal with them as business owners, as people navigating the world. I'll probably talk about some of my own experiences as well in managing that, and if anything pops into my head that I can think of, you know, people in my life that have been in these situations. As you can see, by the way, none of this is scripted. My emails are up on the screen just now. I've not got any notes. This is not how I produce content. I don't script anything. I do. I just kind of come and, and speak and do my thing. So maybe this won't be the most refined episode in the world, but uh, my plan, as with anything I do, is to always continue improving. So uh, hopefully you can bear with me through through doing that. So the topic of pain is an interesting one, especially when it comes to business, because business is not something that all of us do. You know, it won't be something that every single person watching this does, and it's not something that everyone in life chooses as a career path or a vocation. Now, I kind of disagree already with what I've just said. That I think being an entrepreneur and owning a business is a lifestyle choice. It's not just a choice like employment or what you do from nine to five having your own business comes with its, its own pressures, its own expectations. But managing pain inside of your growth as an entrepreneur can be extremely, extremely tough. And I'm saying that from a first-hand perspective. For those of you that don't know me, I've been in business full-time for the last five years um, and my business has grown exponentially, to be totally honest. I've done a whole bunch of different things over those past couple of years with a lot of my main income coming from my property business, now having a, a pretty reasonably sized educational business and a whole bunch of staff now who are relying on me to make sure you're, you know, you're pushing forward and you're, you're doing things to ultimately make sure they get paid at the end of the day. So there's a lot of stress that comes with owning a business and, and putting yourself in, in that kind of position. So when it comes to growing pains, it's essential to think about it in a certain way. And the first thing is, is that when it comes to any type of growth in your life, um, natural growth, aka coming from being a child to a young man to an, an actual full grown man, you're going to go through a huge amount of physical pain just in the process by which your body is growing right it's the same with physical improvement i was lucky enough to you know fight mma for for years and, and training combat sports since i was very young and uh, i'm hoping to be able to fight again this year not mma but um something a lot a combat sport of some description um so there's there's pain involved in you know becoming good at a sport there's pain involved in getting stronger getting bigger more muscular all these different things because you need to put your body under a certain amount of stress for it to produce the right results. Now, I'm a big believer that stress in the right quantities is some of the best things you can ever have. You know, there's been situations in my life and in my business, for example, the, the first year of my business, I, I done quite well financially. It was for who I was at the time, life-changing money. Uh, it wasn't money that I'd ever seen anyone in my family make before um it, it was something that was very new to me and i didn't really have anyone there to guide me or to explain to me what i should do with that money so like most young men would i uh, spend all of it and then some on top so i think in the space of about 12 months potentially a little bit longer 14 months i probably spent somewhere in the region of a hundred twenty thousand pounds I bought a car, A45 AMG, I bought this watch that I'm wearing right now, actually my, my first ever of Rolex, I went on a bunch of holidays, Marbella, for those of you that know me, you know I'm not much of a night out person, I don't go to clubs or anything, but I just had a little spurt in that period of my life where I was going out and spending all this money on drinks, designer clothes, all the things I could never have. Now that created a different type of pain at the end of that, that situation, but 
there and doing that 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 was like a massive lesson for me and it was very very scary and it became a, a sobering reality that shaped my next few years to be totally honest because I went from being in a position where you know I was living at home I didn't have this big massive house that I was paying for or anything but I was managing to burn through ten thousand pounds a month no bother like without an issue um, it's not actually that hard to do, to be totally honest. And I always say in all my, my other videos, if you've ever came to an event of mine, help me speak, £10,000 per month is when you really have your first big lifestyle change. And that comes with a huge amount of stress. It's key to remember that before you are worthy of managing money like that, 10 k a month, it's, it's not a huge amount of money. But for most people, it's like, it's life change money. Average salary in Scotland is what, £27,500? So, it's it's a, a pretty big jump, right? So, you need to become the type of person who can, who can manage that money. It's not about what you can do. It's not about your achievements. It's about who you need to be to actually be able to carry that, the weight of that responsibility. Because making more money can be a burden. Everybody wants to be your friend. You no longer can tell if the, you know, the, the woman you've been speaking to and going on dates with is want to be there because it's you, the same guy that was working as an electrician in my case, or if it's because you've got an AMG now or a BMW i8 and you go on four or five holidays a year, right? It really starts to make you question all of your reality. And often you will find when I'm talking about growing pains, is this starts to happen inside of your circle as well. Now, not everyone you're friends with just now, let's say you're not an entrepreneur yet, or you are an entrepreneur, or you've not got to a point where your lifestyle has drastically changed, you will get to a point, if you do anything outside of the norm, aka I lost a lot of friends going from being 13, 14, 15, to being 18, 19, 20, because I didn't drink, right, and it's so funny, alcohol, one of my friends always says, alcohol is the only drug that if you say no to it, people automatically assume that there's something wrong with you, which is just so funny. But I didn't drink, so I didn't fit in anymore to the, the crowds that I'd grown up with, and, and I became a little bit of an outcast. I had to go and find a new group of friends. That is a type of growing pain. It doesn't mean that I am better than those people, or they're worse than me. It might not be a great lifestyle choice, but it, it doesn't determine our characters. I know plenty of people who have been very heavy drinkers in the past, or still people who go out clubbing, you know, two, three, four nights a week, um, at the grand old age of 25 to 30, which I think is way too old, but they're great entrepreneurs and great people, it doesn't, it's not about personal value, but it's a type of growing pain, and you will experience that when you become a reasonably successful entrepreneur, when you hit that 100k a year, what's that look at as, 8,000 pounds a month, it takes you like 96 grand or something like that, like, you will have a massive stage of growing pains because the evil eye starts to come out, jealous friends, people that just want to see you do well but not better than them. Thankfully, I'm in an amazing circle. When I say I'm in an amazing circle, please don't confuse that as being a large circle. I have four, five close friends. It's probably my business partner, Paul, my mate, Kieran, I've trained with for years, Antonio, my friend from Malaga Tapas, he owns all those restaurants. My big friend Stephen Ronaldo, he owns Primal Strength. My friend Cole. Like, all the people I'm naming here are either high-level business owners or extremely good and well-paid for what it is that they do. High achievers. And there's, I don't think there's a accidental correlation that all of them are health and fitness conscious all of them can fight, so we all train and stuff like that. So we're all on the same page with a lot of different things. That's my circle of friends. And to be honest, I don't feel like I need any more friends and who I have in my extended circle on top of that. Now, I went through a phase of having my friends from school. And by the way, don't misconstrue this as you have a bust up and you break away from your friends. Like That's not strictly what I'm saying, right? But you will change when you make money. You will change. I became, in some ways, arrogant. I became, in other ways, much more kind. I had more money to be able to give to people and do things with and, and all that kind of stuff. But there's parts of you that will change, right? And the problem isn't you changing. The problem is that your friends don't. 
It's not to be blamed on you for changing or becoming a more elevated version of yourself, which, by the way, will come with some of your bad traits getting slightly worse, and good friends will help you manage them, other friends will try and crucify you for them, um, but you will grow out of certain people inside of your circle. Now, it becomes like watching someone drown, in a sense, is that that jealousy brings out evil in other people, and they will see you doing well, and because that they're not doing it for themselves, and because you're not deliberately dragging them along through that journey and forcing results out of them, they will vilify you, in a way. Now, when I say it's like watching someone drown, there is one piece of advice that I would like to think everyone knows. Sorry, I've got dry lips today. Um, a bit of advice that I would like to think everyone knows is that if you see someone drowning, the last thing you are meant to do is jump in to try and rescue that person. Now, we will all have our exceptions. There are multiple people in my life that I would jump in and gladly risk my life for and go against that advice. But generally across the board, that's the worst thing you can do is jump in. And the reason being is that someone, when faced with a life or death situation, is human nature to naturally do whatever it takes to ensure that you survive. And that could mean killing someone that you love, right? You see someone that you really love and care about drowning, you jump in because you want to be selfless and save their life. And you do so, but by ending your own life. Because in human nature, they're going to choose to live over you. It's not a cognitive thing. It's no longer a rational thought. It's something that they do. There are going to be people in your life that you need to watch drown. And it's not going to be easy. You're going to see them toil and battle with employment they're not happy with, wages that they don't like, not being able to afford things that maybe you can afford for yourself, not being able to, you know, there's someone who lives month to month and all that kind of stuff and they see you living a better quality of life and it brings out an inadequacy in them that they take out on you. Understand that all hatred is born of hatred of self, right? No one hates another man or another woman because they truly just hate them as an individual. It's an, an inadequacy within themselves or a, un, like a, a difference in alignment between those two people. So that's not me saying that you hate someone who has money strictly because you don't have any money. It may just be a different alignment in your social beliefs and, and stuff like that, right? The process of having to, to watch that person drown is not going to be fun, but you cannot allow yourself to be at risk of drowning and failing at whatever your main goal is, that big task you want to achieve, you can't allow that to happen in order to save someone who is not aligned with your life path anyway. All friendships and relationships are inherently selfish, right? I understand that I get something from all of my friends. Pick out any of my friends. Paul. Paul's one of my best friends. He's also my business partner. He's one of my closest advisors, not just with business, but with life. The amount of advice I've went to that guy for when it comes to you know, money management, investment, relationships, you name it, go to him with anything, I get something out of that relationship, don't know what he gets from being friends with me, but there'll be something there, right, maybe I make him feel young or something, because like, he's slightly older than me, I don't know, but there's always something there, every friendship is transactional in nature, that does not make it bad, doesn't mean that when one of my friends says, oh Richard, can you come and help me move house, I'm going to be like, oh no, it's not in our terms and conditions, I'm going to either help, or if I'm not there, I'll offer to, you know, hire a van for them and spend a little bit of money or send someone in my place. That doesn't bother me, right? But all friendships are naturally transactional. And when there is a negative balance in that transaction, it is going to cause a fracture. Now, you need to understand that it's not as simple as you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, although I do believe in that. There are going to be times where you fight with these things, you feel responsible for your friends, you feel responsible for the people around you, and you also feel that you're carrying a large burden and pain. Now, whilst we're talking about the topic of pain, and I know a lot of you will be thinking about the topic of pain in business, there is something that I personally can help you with in terms of reducing the stress inside of your organisation, being more efficient with your time, reducing costs, improving staffing processes, and that is with our Growth Girls program. It's a 12-month mentorship. You work directly with me and my expert team here in Growth Girls. These guys here, we're going to help show you how you can automate a lot of your business, how you can start generating more revenue online, even if you're like a plumber, electrician, bricky, something you think, I'm not an online business, how do I go and do that? We're going to show you how you can automate and simplify a lot of your business, save on staffing, become more efficient, actually start getting some of your time back. So if you want to get a 
application form for the growth scale is going to take you about 60 seconds to fill out you'll be able to get it either on a card somewhere down here or you'll get it in the show notes or the description below if you're watching on youtube you're watching them and you think to yourself wow i could really help them out of this situation and maybe feel a certain degree of regret now i'm going to tell you a tough story from my own life and it's not something i talk about often but a few years ago unfortunately um my older cousin died of a drug overdose and she was only six or seven years older than me um not so not someone that is old uh and for anyone who's had a death like this in their family you know that it's very tough it's it's shocking it's also expected in some ways there's there's a whole host of different emotions you can put down to it now i i carry a lot of guilt from that situation not because it was actually my fault or anything like that but I look back on it and I look at the contrast in lifestyles, right? And I look and think to myself, okay, at that point, we were probably doing £250,000 a year. That's not personal income, that's just in your business. And um, I definitely paid myself too much over the first couple of years anyway. But I had my BMW i8 and I had my house in Glasgow Hall. But if I remember correctly, or potentially I was still at Barland Street in the south side. But I had a very nice quality of life. Uh, I had a decent office, I had everything that I needed and what I also had was surplus income and I knew that someone in my family was struggling. Now did I know as much, did I, did I know to the degree of which it was happening? No, I, I was probably unaware of how bad it actually was. Um, I mean you, you look at, so I knew, I, I knew that my, my cousin had addiction issues, I knew all of that stuff um, but I, ha I have to look back in that situation Anytime I see photos of her, anytime I see, you know, videos or Facebook memories pop up. I even found some photos from my first birthday party um, in 1997 in my nan and grandpa's house. And it's a photo of me, my grandpa Jimmy, my great grandfather is no longer alive. Um, a couple of other people, my granny Gina, my mum's mum, no longer alive. And my cousin Abby there was, was sitting right beside me. And it's a, it's a very hard thing to see because it reminds you of who that person once was and, and you forget who they unfortunately became and it's it's sad to look at and I have to think about that and think I was in a position financially where I could have potentially saved that person's life right I could have afforded a rehabilitation facility I could have afforded a property to take her out of the area she was in where she probably knew people who were involved in that type of life and all that I, I could have solved that issue more than likely but I didn't right I, I didn't now I don't think that inherently makes me selfish it was never asked of me and again you don't realize how bad it is until it's done right so if I could go back and knew how the story ended I would do something about it right but I have to I have to carry that to a certain degree now I can't say that I'm traumatised because of that, because in my own belief, I'm not saying that I'm correct, this is how I choose to set up my life, I don't believe in trauma, I believe in things happening. Good things happen, bad things happen. Now, there are situational traumas and chronic traumas that, like PTSD and stuff like that, that I think are completely real, so I'm not nullifying those situations. I've seen for me in my life, I have seen some mad, horrible stuff whether it be stabbings, attempted murders, you name it, I've seen a lot of it. For those of you that are in that school of thought that believe I grew up with all this money in some ivory castle in a cosy suburb of Glasgow, it's just not true, right? Uh, I've managed to do it okay. I've got a lot more that I want to do, but I, I am certainly not someone who's from a posh area. I've seen a lot of things in my life. I'm not traumatised by any of them because I choose not to be. The same way I could choose to be traumatised by them, you could get someone who's been in the exact same situation as me who now is sitting chronically affected taking pills all day and and i choose not to be that person i cognitively have control over how i approach those situations i don't think everyone has that ability but i do and i manage it that way now people out there therapists or whoever right not that i really know many of them would tell you oh that's you bottling it up and, and that's this and that. Like, I, I don't believe that is how I choose to manage my life. I think I'm reasonably good at managing most of my emotions. But those pains, like that situation I spoke about from my own life, and you might have something like that in your life, or a person who is still in your life who you're thinking about in that, in that kind of way. Like, what are you meant to do now? 
right? That situation has happened. Well, what do I do now? Do I, do I just go, oh, I'm unhappy with myself that I let that happen, so I'm going to down tools now and go and work a normal job? No, because there's still other people who are relying on me. There's my mum and dad are relying on me, my sister's relying on me, and I don't mean that in terms of, you know, they're like unemployed sitting on the couch. They're all employed high. My dad's an incredible electrician. My mum works in the Scottish government with like, like public transport infrastructure that I, I almost don't understand. My sister's a medical professional. Like, I, I'm not saying they rely on me because they're, they're waiting for me to do something to make their lives better, but they're all career-focused people. I'm an entrepreneur. I probably have an ability to make more money faster, and if that can trickle-down effect and benefit my family in a way, of course, I'm going to do it, right? Like, I, I, I'm going to do that. And I feel a responsibility to do that for my kids when I have them eventually, which you know, God willing, will be soon in the next couple of years if the if the situation pans out correctly, that, that would be amazing. So I still need to be present for those people, right? Yes, I lost someone in my family that I love. Yes, they were very young. Yes, it was a, a not a nice way for them to pass. Yes, all that stuff was hard. And yes, I probably could have solved the problem, but there's so many variables. Would they have wanted that? Would they have wanted to go and try that would they have completed that would I then have you know priced myself in mentally and emotionally not financially but mentally and emotionally would I price myself into consistently being there would that have then dragged me away from my main business and that then fails and then the knock-on effect is that my immediate family mum dad sister nana grandpa cousins whoever they all suffer because of that and then when it goes wrong at the end the burden is even heavier I don't have the control to be able to go back and change situations, but I can look at them, I can learn from them, and I can understand that, yeah, they were sad and painful, but I can't allow them to then make me stop in my tracks. And there's so many people I speak to, and people who agree with me will hear this the right way. People who don't won't, and it's whatever. I get clipped out of context all the time on social media, so to be honest, I don't really care anymore. Like, take what I say how you want. It doesn't bother me. I hear from people so many excuses, right? And I truly mean that. I mean excuses. Like, yeah, I've I've had a good life, especially my last couple of years. It's been good, but it's been hard. Running a business is hard. Different relationships, friends, romantically, they go wrong, they go right. Like, there's so many hards in all of these things, right? So many hards. They're consistently carrying a little bit on your back you know some people are carrying this massive bag of pain and hurt throughout the whole lives and when I speak to people who sit down and maybe they're carrying that massive hurt they're carrying that little bit of hurt that affects them just as much because all pain is relative right and different people are predisposed to deal with pain in better ways I think the way I was brought up I was I was brought up to deal with it really well especially from my dad Um, I, I often find I give my mum my a lot of credit for stuff and I, I almost, by accident, forget my dad, right? And it's maybe it's because me and my dad are so familiar and like we're almost like mates now because we worked for so worked together for so long and stuff. But I often give my mum credit for stuff, and I don't know why I just I just miss out my dad, which is unfair, right? Because my dad was always there. He was always there. He was away working and stuff, but like he, he was like he was just always there. We've done the football together. He got me into martial arts, like all these different things. He, he was always there. So I think I learned a lot of that from my dad naturally, not because he sat me down and taught me those lessons, but children learn what they see. And I know that my dad has been stressed out his mind. My mum too, but I can relate with my dad more sometimes because I'm a man. I know that my dad's been stressed out his mind in his life. Now that I'm an adult man and I run a business and I know what it's like managing money and managing staff, I know what my dad's life has been like. I've never seen him break once, but I know. And me and him can look at each other now and be like, yeah, we know. And I, I know the sacrifices mum and dad have had to make to make sure myself and my sister had things. And that itself there is pain because parents always wish and want to do more, right? Naturally. I was, oh, could we have done more? Could we have provided more? Could we have worked harder? All these what if questions. So I'll sit down with parents, young people, older people, just business owners in general, just because of my line of work. And they'll say, oh, but Richard, you don't understand. Like, I, I've seen this and I've had that, you know, my parents have passed away or, you know, I, I don't have any family left, I have no friends, 
girls aren't interested in me, you know, I try and talk to women and they, they don't give me any time and maybe they've never had a girlfriend before, like, all these different things that will mentally play a big toll on people, they're like, you don't understand me, right? And I used to spend so much time fighting with them by saying, like, look, I've had this situation in my life and I've came back from it and I've had this and I've had that. But what they're generally looking for is for you to confirm, yeah, that's true, you have been through all of that. Fine, like, I understand being successful and building a decent business isn't for you. So that then they're able to go around and live an average life, right? Let's face it, that's what they're going to do. Go and live an average life. They've had that box ticked. They were thinking it themselves, oh, I can't do this because of that and this thing and that thing. But they want someone else to confirm it for them. So that when the time comes around when they feel this horrendously deep sensation of guilt, wow, I, I didn't try hard enough. Oh, but this person told me it was okay. They can pass the buck on to you. I tried to fight this for so long and it's literally only recently, and when I say recently, I'm talking about three months, maybe four months, that when I hear this, oh, you know, Richard, my life is so hard and, and I've got this coming up and I've got kids and I'm trying to grow this business and, like, what am I meant to do? I'm just like, okay, fine. We're just going to stop. Is that what it is? Okay, just stop today. Just stop today. If that is how bad it is, no problem, fine. If that is enough for you to completely down tools, just now, okay, go for it, go, do it, no problem. And when you do this to people, you tend to get a little bit of bite back at first, and then they tend to let their guard down. So an example might be someone coming telling me, you know, I'm trying to manage my business, and my wife's on my back because I'm not in the house as much, and I'm trying to manage my kids, and I'm working hard to do more for them, and to make more money, and all this kind of stuff. And if you have a partner, man or woman, who is willing to sacrifice time, willing to sacrifice being around the family, being home to put the kids to bed, being at the school assembly, being at that first day of P1, whatever it may be, because they're working so hard to try and improve your life, and you vilify that person for that. One of my New Year's goals is to swear a lot less, so I'm trying to watch my language here. But if, if you're able to do that to someone... You, you never loved or understood that person. Just tick that box because that person's doing that not just for them, they're doing it for you and for the family and all that kind of stuff as well, right? But that person comes to me and lays us all down. Richard, what am I meant to do? I, I can never be successful. Okay, fine. You can never be successful. Cool. What happens now? What changes? Like, what is the next step? Yeah, you can't be successful now. You've confirmed that. You, you've, you've affirmed it to yourself. That is a situ situation we're in now. What's the plan? What happens next? Go and get a normal job that you're not satisfied with. You take that dissatisfaction back into the home. Doesn't make your family happy. Your kids see a stressed mum and a stressed dad. They hear you guys arguing. What are you arguing about? More than likely money. They, they grow up with bad ideas and feelings around money because, oh, well, that's what mum and dad argued about. Why would, I, why would I want to think about money? Why would I want to understand money? And that situation you find yourself in, right? You can't wash your slate clean. You can't take away all the things in the past that have hurt you, right? You can't take away all that pain. The friends that you had a fight with that you think, wow, well, I was in the wrong there, but the friendship burned now and we can't change and it's never going to be the same. And you can't fix everything, right? This is something that I am having to learn right now in my life. I can't fix everything. I can't right every wrong in the world. As much as I want to, and it can torment me sometimes, thinking about people that I dislike or things that people have done to me and it can keep me up at night, I cannot right every wrong. I just can't do it. I don't have the time, I don't have the effort. It's not worth the investment of energy. Even though you want to do it, I can't right every wrong. It's, it's impossible. So what do we do in that situation then? Do we just go, yeah, okay, live in a humph for our non-Scottish listeners? A humph is like a, someone being in a bit of a funk or a stage of unhappiness. Do we just live like that forever and accept that, yes, yeah, is an average life? Because realistically, at that point, you're not just letting yourself down. 
even though your wife or your husband may be on your back and you're struggling and you're in the office, this desk that I'm at right now, it's not happened often, thankfully, because I have a home office now, but there's been nights where I've sat my head down on this and fell asleep. I fell asleep on this desk because I've been in here half 11, 12, half 1 in the morning, falling asleep here. I've got a two-piece couch thing here with like a footrest. I've slept on that before. It, it just happened. Something my old office at George Square, I used to do it constantly. Like, all the time. I, I didn't even, I didn't actually want to go home because I was so scared of what happens if I lose my business. I didn't want to leave and go home. I would just stay in the office. We had showers in the office. I would take a towel with me or I would go to the gym before it. I would make sure that I got up before my staff would come in. We only had, like, two members of staff most of the time, right? It was a very small team. I would get up, I would go, I would wash myself, I'd come back, I'd put my towel inside my rucksack, I'd put my soap and stuff inside of my drawer, and I'd be sitting at my desk, and when people came in, they would think, oh, Richard's just been in early. If I decided to go to the gym, they would go, oh, Richard's coming in late. That was how I lived my life, because I was so chronically terrified at the prospect of losing my business. And I still fight with that all the time. You know, it's just called the entrepreneurial roller coaster. I don't think it's imposter syndrome for me, personally. If you don't know what imposter syndrome is, it's just not feeling worthy of the situation that you're in. I understand that I've worked hard, and I know also that I could have done a lot better as well, but, like, I'm, I'm aware of the correlation between hard work and having what I have, so I don't think it's imposter syndrome for me. But I think to myself, wow, we've built this in the last, you know, five years and my life really changed. Great house and comfortable life and hire, right now we're hiring almost a new member of staff every week, right? And, and I look at that and I go, I think to myself, wow, I imagine we lost it. But the reality is we'd lose it because of me, right? There is no member of staff that can take my business down. And there's none of them. They would lose it because of me. Me not working hard enough, me not ticking the boxes, me not being present, me not being a good leader. That is how we lose it. And the, the idea of that pain right there is unbearable. But the reality is, is that every single one of us here right now, listening together, we have all been through a pain that we have imagined would be unbearable. We have been through something that we've thought to ourselves, there is no way I'm going to see the other side of this. This is just too heavy. It's too heavy. I don't know how long I can carry it for. It's breaking me down and we've all got through it. Does that mean we don't move forward with a couple lumps, bumps, scars, bad memories? No, that's not what I'm saying. But you're going to have those things anyway. And it comes back to what I say. Okay, what next? Do we just give up now because you've got that thing? Do we give up on everything? You know, I'm 27 years old, right? I I I've had some great parts of my life, some terrible parts of my life, some extreme pain, some extreme pleasures. I've had all of it, right? But I've got, realistically, just in life expectancy terms, 45, 50 years still to go. I'm like a third through my life. It's a long time. If I, say I lose everything tomorrow, all my businesses, I'm bankrupt, my cars are off me, I've got no house, I'm staying back at my mum and dad's house, or you know, I'm, I'm sleeping in the office again, or, or whatever it may be, I'm not going to go, okay, that was my one shot, that was my one spin, what happens now, I've failed at business, no way, I can't do that, it's not, it's not in my, my makeup mentally, I have to try again and keep going, because I've still got another 50 years to go, I've been in business for five years, if I lost everything after five years, I'm going to sacrifice 10 times that, because I failed once, no way, I can't do that, too many people relying on me, too many people needing me to do this, and by the way, there's people that don't even know me who are relying on me, it, it, it sounds like a mad concept, but there's people out there that need to see your story, hear your story eventually, because it's going to speak to them in some way, wow, I grew up like that, and I've seen things like that, and I lost my dad at that age, and I lost my mum at that age, I, I know that story, I need to go out there, I need to do this thing, right, you, your story, and telling that story, it, it means a lot more to someone out there than, than you could ever realise and could actively change their lives. So yeah, pain is heavy. There's going to be growing pains. There's going to be the pain of losing out on a client. There's going to be the pain of being behind on invoices. There's going to be the pain of missing out on rent. There's going to be the pain of looking at your bank balance. It's not quite as healthy as it was before because you've invested a lot into your team and it's not quite coming to fruition yet. These pains are all going to come, right? Comes back to what one of my friends, Colin, 
from Canberra Conversations. You might have seen maybe on his podcast twice before. Um, a quote that I absolutely love from him, and I don't know where he got it from, but it's it's this. The tools are heavy, but they will feel light in your hands. You might wonder to yourself right now, how is that possible? How am I going to carry these things that are going to feel light in my hands? You have naturally a power to endure within you. A power to carry a huge amount of pain. There is no point in trying to avoid it. You cannot live a pain-free life. You're going to lose the people you love. They're going to pass. They might not pass in the nicest way. You, there's a one in six chance, if I remember right, there's a one in six chance that someone in your family is going to die of cancer. Um, there is also a disproportionate, if you have a, a large amount of men in your family, there's a disproportionate chance that a man within your family is going to commit suicide. Um, there's a chance that you might lose a child. There's all these different things here that are unimaginable pains, right? Unimaginable pains, but they're going to happen, right? That's the reality. I'm not here to sugarcoat stuff and be like, hey, wake up at five in the morning and do a three-hour morning routine of cold water and breathing and yoga and gratitude journals because, see, doing all that nonsense, right? I love cold water and all that kind of stuff. But see these three-hour morning routines, right? See when that bit of news comes in that someone you love is dead or that that business you've been working on for so long it's not going to trade anymore your morning routine has done nothing for you zero it's done zero you don't then hear that news and go don't worry i'm all good i'm in the i'm zen now it's a it's a load of nonsense if you want to wake up at five in the morning and do something between five and eight do you know what you should do work that's what you should do between five and eight you should work because that is going to pay off the biggest dividends it's going to give the people that you love the better cha the best possible change in their life. And this stuff right here, this pain is a process. We all know our own weaknesses. My biggest weakness, anger. It is my biggest, most chronic weakness is anger. It was really good actually hearing Alex Hulmose and Layla Hulmose talking about this a, a couple of days ago on the Ice Coffee Hour podcast with Graham Stephan. And Alex talking a lot about how anger is his main emotion. He, he he hears something upsetting, he becomes angry. All of his emotions dial down into anger and how much Layla, his wife, has helped him with that over the years and, and whatnot. And I felt like, wow, hearing that story, I, I'm I'm living what I'm talking about two seconds ago. Hearing that story, I'm like, wow, like that that's like my life. Like, I, I know exactly how that feels. And this is going to be a process. New pain is going to come. Pain that you never expected is going to come. It's going to blindside you. Right, it's it's gonna it's gonna come at you from angles you cannot imagine. You will never live a life that you won't feel pain. People think that life is all about being happy, happy, dancing, dancing, all that kind of stuff. I, I I'm not here to understand and live a fair life, right? I'm not here to have a life that I think is full of equality. I am willing to do things that are unfair, that are not equal for me because I want above average results and I understand that at least for the next few years that is the way my life needs to be. I get amazing benefits alongside that. Holidays, nice car, amazing team that I love working with. I can, I mean I'm wearing the Growth Girls t-shirt that costs seven quid to make, cream arc shorts and Air Max 95 just now. I'm not exactly wearing a whole bunch of designer stuff but if I want to go and buy expensive clothes I can do it so I'm not slaving away and working so hard for nothing but these people out there are telling you oh yeah we can start your stress-free business it's gonna do a hundred thousand pounds a year bam 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 it's just not true you must prepare yourself for mental warfare because it's gonna come whether you like it or not it's gonna come and I'm not saying that to worry you I'm not saying that to make you anxious I'm saying that in the hopes that you hear what I'm saying and you prepare there's some news in your life that you can't prepare yourself for. You're going to hear it and it's going to hurt you so much. It's going to knock you for sex. You may be in your bed for a week. But what you can't do is you can't put the tools down. You can't stop because there's someone else who's waiting for you to do something good. That child, that wife, that husband, that mother. You never know who's going to end up ill in your family. 
and you might need to be the person that steps in financially, and physically being in their presence, whatever it needs to be, and 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 you can solve that issue, right? Because I know what it's like to think you can solve that issue or think you could have solved that issue and you didn't do it, right? I've had family pass, friends pass, way 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 too young, and very not nice ways i've got family and friends in prison who may never see the world again (laughs) depending on on how that goes and these things are all all hard but guess what they'd be hard if i was still an electrician they'd be hard if i chose when i got offered to go and do my electrical engineering degree (laughs) <laughs> they would be hard whether I decided to drop out and join the fire service like my grandfather something I always wanted to do was be a firefighter it would be hard if I'd done that all of these hards are going to come and they're going to hit you like this regardless of where you are what you do how you've planned your life so if you want to be the person that downs the tools that whacks the handbrake on your life and says yeah you know what I'm walking away from this I'm done for this life is unfair life was never meant to be fair Life is disproportionately unfair all the time and we will always think that in our own realities. But that doesn't mean you can't be driven, doesn't mean you can't be grateful, doesn't mean you can't provide for the people that you care about. If you want to down those tools, fine. I could never be that person and everyone in my life could never be that person. I could lose everything and everyone and I'll still be here. Will I be scarred, beaten, bruised, hurt, upset, maybe even a bit do lally in the head if I'm not already? Yeah, probably, but I'm still going to be there. I'm going to stand up and be counted when it matters to be stand to stand up and be counted. I'm going to be present when I need to be present. I'm going to tick the boxes that I need to tick. One thing I pride myself on is that I don't allow my emotional state to stop the quality of my work. I'm able to be chronically upset about stuff and still work and still do the things I need to do. Maybe not quite as good as I might do them, but I'm still there. I'm still in the meeting, I'm still smiling, I'm still there with that person. And if I want to have my time and be emotional and be hurt and deal with that pain, I'll do it myself in the house, I'll do it with my church family, I'll do it with certain friends potentially, who knows. But don't be defined by your pain and don't force yourself to believe that you have been through intense trauma because a lot of this is down to your thinking. And what you say often becomes your reality. Words have power. If you're constantly saying, I'm traumatised, I'm depressed, I'm anxious, it's probably going to come to you if it hasn't already, right? You can feel depression without being depressed. Like, it's, it's an emotion, it's not always an affliction or a medical condition. And I think nowadays, with the internet and almost mental health issues can be glamorised, People want to feel pain. People want to feel marginalised. People want to feel depressed. People want to feel anxious. They want these labels. For those of you listening to me, by the way, some people don't. Some people don't want them and you still have them. And you still get up and you still keep going and for you out there, I love you and bless you for doing that. It's incredible, right? But there's many people who choose to be these people, who choose to be victimised. If you're one of those people that's heavy, let it go. Just let it go. You have potential such amazing potential within you to go and do something amazing not just in business you may be the next big artist or musician or you'll find a cure to some disease and and maybe you'll never be paid enough for it but but that is your story that's the big thing that you do pain is going to be there it's going to be present it's not going to go away it's going to come back you've got plenty of it waiting for you in your future so what are you going to do about it you're going to give up now you're going to cash your chips in now close the shop today and just sit in fear shaking waiting for the pain to catch up with you are you going to build a life that's worth talking about something that you can actually be proud of something your family can be proud of something that can sustain your wife your husband can sustain your kids it can retire your parents can do something that's actually worthwhile don't be defined by your pain your value goes beyond that there's many stories I would rather hear about how you done this and you done that and you made an amazing life than how you're defined by what hurt you in your life. Because in every aspect of your existence, there is still more to come. Thank you very much for listening to this 
hopefully it made sense. It's my first time kind of doing anything like this, so and I actually really enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to doing the the next few ones, especially the solo ones. But we will have some guests coming up soon. Uh, I don't know what the call to action is for Apple or Spotify. Do I say follow the podcast, like the podcast, subscribe to the podcast? I don't know, but if you've enjoyed it, feel free to do whatever that thing is. If you're here on YouTube, feel free to like or subscribe or comment on it. I'm always open to any feedback, whether it be in agreement, disagreement, negative or positive. I get enough of that on the internet anyway. I'm used to it. I've got thick skin. So thank you very much for listening or watching and I'll catch up with you next time.